Thank you. Thanks everyone for coming. Uh, I know it's getting late in the day and it's been a long week, but we've only got a few more sessions to go. Uh, but as like I said, thank you for joining us. Um, and I have been challenged to do some juggling throughout this session. So yeah, that's really why you're going to want to stick around. Uh, but we've got short on time, so let's crack on and talk yeah. about Foundry Local. Hey, everybody. How many of you are doing any kind of generative AI right now? Are you doing it on locally or in the cloud? Locally. Well, if you are not familiar with the challenges between running things in the cloud and locally, running things locally on a device is, is hard. And you know we get spoiled when we run models on, on the cloud. Um, first of all, um, one of the challenges of running it on the cloud is you have to pay a lot of money, right? So when you try to get a model on your device locally, that's your, your, it's for free. You're running it on your device for free. At the same time, you're also keeping a lot of the information on your device, right? You're not sending it to someone else's cloud. You know where the data is. You know where it lives. So it's all keeping it on the, on the device. You have full control over that data. At the same time, you're not depending on the network. It all runs on that device, and you are in control of how fast the data can go and based on the device hardware as well. And it all can run offline, right? You're not depending on the cloud, so you can run offline. And then you're not worried about any kind of quota or trolling because you control that device completely. Um, however, there are some challenges when running things online, uh, running locally. For example, there are some hardware constraints, right? You can't run any model on any hardware. These models are, are very big, right? And they can take up a lot of memory. So you need to make sure that the device you're running this model on has the right hardware to be able to run that model size that you're looking. So you're limited to the size of the model you're running based on that. Um, at the same time, there's different types of hardware. So if you're reaching millions of people, they all have different types of devices. So how do you send the right model to the right device? And how do you get that there? Right? How, do you, how do you maintain the right models? How do you decide which model to run when and how uh, as part of that? And at the same time, different models and different frameworks have different capabilities of different systems. So how do you work around that? So there's a lot of work you have to do to kind of manage this across all those different devices. So to help with that, we came up with Foundry Local, which allows you to deliver the best model to your device. It is a service that runs locally on your device that can decide what's the right model to run on top of your on top of the device that it's running on. You as a developer, you just request a certain model, and then Foundry Local decides what that model is, whether it's running on the GPU, CPU, or even NPU as part of that. And we run the model that's the best optimized for that device that supports the right quantization, and you can run on the right hardware, whether you have a good GPU or not. Um, we also found your local supports uh, running these models for you, so it spins up a whole service that is OpenAI compliant, so that way you can use the same, uh, same frameworks you're using with OpenAI or all the other frameworks to just call into this local HTTP endpoint that you're using. So for example, in this code here, you can see here we're using the C Sharp SDK with Foundry Local. We're importing the Microsoft.ai.Foundry Local uh, namespace. We're saying we want to use the Quan 2.5 model, the, five, the 0 0.5 billion uh, parameter model. We're starting a new Foundry manager um, to, with that uh, model name. And then we just get a model client to be able to start calling it just the same pattern that you might be used to. However, a lot of the challenges here are now you're managing an application uh, you're managing a model within the application, as well as trying to be the application that's using this model. And that's where Eric here uh, can help us uh, solve that problem. Yeah, so in a, uh, a dis distributed application, which any application that consists of some kind of you know, a front end or a service or something like that, and some kind of, uh, and uh, like a database, or in this case, a model, like that's a distributed application. You've got multiple services. And for, for that, like you're really going to be juggling, hey, I threw in that analogy, you're going to end up juggling a whole bunch of different things together. And that's where .NET Aspire can, cu can come in. So in that previous example, the application was doing both the model download and management of the service, as well as consuming it. With Aspire, we separate that out. We have our app host, which is responsible for orchestrating the model uh, download and, and, and engaging with the Foundry local service. And then we have our client application. So in this case, it's going to be a web application that's going to consume that. In this case, it's going to use the Microsoft extensions, a, a Microsoft um, Azure Inference SDK rather than the OpenAI SDK, just because I wanted to sh um, show the, the different styles of interop. Now we're then turning into a set of interfaces available through Microsoft Extensions AI, so that we can do things like function, vocation, and, and so on and so forth. But you're here for a demo. You're not just here to see us juggle and uh, do slides. So let's jump over to uh, Visual Studio, where I've um, I've got uh, an application I've created using the uh, Microsoft Extensions 
uh, AI templates. So this is just a, a, a template application that uh, I've you know, filed new in Visual Studio, but I want to add Foundry Local to it. Uh, so I've got the Aspire integration enabled as well for it. So I'm going to come to uh, our, our post here. I'm going to add a NuGet package. So this is the Foundry uh, hosting integration because I'm hosting Foundry Local in my app host. Now, this is a pre-release NuGet package, and I'm making sure that the demo is going to work. It, it is running off, like, entirely off my machine, not off the, the NuGet feed. We're working with the team to get this out and available so that you can use it yourselves. But let's add this to our, um, our app host. And then come into the app host here and say, well, I'm going to want to create a Foundry resource. So in Aspire, we call these resources. So I'm Foundry resource. So I'm on the builder, I want to add a Foundry local resource called, I give it a name, uh, we'll call it AI. And then on this, so this is kind of like that start service sort of thing from the SDK. But with it, I then want to say, the, I want a, say, chat model. Uh, and I'm going to say Foundry, add a model with a name. So this is like the deployment name you would have in Foundry. So I'll call this chat because its role is going to be chat. And then what is the model family I want? So Quen 2.5-0.5v. So that's then specifying the model for then Foundry Local to work out the right one for my hardware. Is it going to be a CPU or a GPU or an NPU enabled version? Now, the last thing I want to do is I want to add it as a reference. I want it, so with reference, so I'm passing that reference to this uh, resource across to my uh, client application. There's the chat model. Thanks, GitHub Copart. And then because I need that model to be downloaded before my application can start, I can also say, wait for the chat model. So then my web application won't get, a, get started by the Aspire app host, our orchestrator of our distributed application, until that model is available. Now, I have actually already downloaded this model, so you're not going to see that in, uh, run in real time. I didn't want to rely on conference Wi-Fi downloading uh, a model over it. Uh, it's, it. It would be a little bit of, well, I'd have to do a lot of juggling for that one. You have the time. Uh, I, I, I could have. <laughs> do I say, do we, do we want to try it? Do we want to delete the model off my local location, try and download it real time? I, I'm, I'm hearing a lot of goes, goes to that. Okay, so we're going to do Foundry, uh, cache, cache, RM. All right. If this doesn't work, I'm blaming the audience. No, it's my fault. <laughs> Actually, no, sorry, I'm, I'm blaming my speaker. But you, you enabled him. I, I heard yes. yeses coming at me. Um, all right. No pressure. No pressure, no pressure. All right. Uh, well, I've got no recovery path if this doesn't work. <laughs> uh, so, so then on my client application, my, my web application, I'm going to add the, um, the, the NuGet package. Whoops, uh, not from NuGet, from my, my downloaded version of the packages. So I'm going to add the Aspire Azure, inf, uh, Azure AI inference package. So this is just a thin veneer around the, uh, the, that NuGet package for Azure AI inference, which means that it's going to uh, understand when I say, builder, I want a chat completions client, and I want to use that chat model. So that's the one that I defined in my, uh, my app host. Uh, let's turn that into a uh, Microsoft Extensions AI, and then we're going to say use uh, function calling. Uh, let's go function calling. And then we're going to say, use open telemetry. So that we can get some rich diagnostic logging, which is another thing we get out of this file. Let's hit F5, uh, and we're going to see just how fast we can download this model. I should have plugged, they, they offered me a hardline internet connection. I was like, nah, it's fine. So we'll see, we'll see how well this goes. If um, not, everybody shut down what you're doing right now. Yeah. Stop. Uh, everyone off the Wi-Fi. <laughs> It's all good. Uh, the, the, the Quen model is pretty small, so it's, uh, I think it's only uh, like 800 meg or something, so okay. it shouldn't take too long uh, to, to download. He famously says with uh, like five minutes left in the, the time slot that we've got available. Um, all right, so now our, our, our post is starting up at the moment. Um, it's uh, about to launch the dashboard. We'll see that pop up in a second. Uh, here we go. We'll see our resources. There we go. We have our model. It is downloading. Not particularly fast. That is not a great uh, start, but you, you can see like it's going out and doing that whole acquisition process for it. So because um, we just described in, uh, in Aspire, in code, this is all the stuff that we want to do. Um, that will then come and it'll, it'll execute those operations for us, bring down that model, um, and it will eventually become up and running. We also notice that the web application is in a waiting state because we said that we want to wait for that model to become available. So this will... Quite definitely not download in, in the time, but uh, I, I'm, I'm sure you can un, like, understand the, the process. And anyway, the, the demo of the application is not particularly exciting because that's not the point of what we wanted to show off here. We weren't showing you 
how you can build a chat UI for a, a, in a web application. It was more how you manage that orchestration in a distributed application design with, say, Foundry Local. So, um, and yeah, I don't think I have another model on here. Let's, let's just che quickly check. I don't think I do. Foundry uh, model list. Wait, no, it's not model list. It's cache, cache list. Yeah. list. Let's see. Do I have another model on here? No. Nope. Oh. No, it's at one point something percent. Uh, yeah. <laughs> so, so this is actually pol like what. So behind the scenes, what it does is it actually uses that SDK from Foundry Local, uh, and then it, it's requesting from it to download that model. So, and then it's it's polling that to get the progress download of it. So, um, it'll go. Like, is there a smaller model I can download? No, I think that's the smallest one. That's have, right. Yeah. But it's uh, okay. It, I mean, we can all come back tomorrow, and then we'll download it, and we'll be fine. We'll just continue from then. Yeah. Uh, but behind the scenes, all it is doing is it's, it's orchestrating this um, command line tool anyway for us. Um, uh, unfortunately, I can't swap that. Uh, oh, you only have one? Because I only okay. have one. Oh, actually. Uh, let's, let's see. Where is my cable bag? Well, look at that. 15%. 15%. It's going. It's getting there. Uh, I, have, I have a USB-C to uh, USB-A. Let's see if I can uh, find that one. No. Let's see if we can. Let's see if we plug in Ethernet and it goes any faster. This is how you know you're at the end of uh, day three of build. Is that you know, we are just freaking out ever so slightly as our demos do not go quite to plan. But no, uh, I like. I don't think that's going to download in time. Um, feel free to stick around. We'll, we'll jump off to the side if you want to. If you want to see proof that this does work, um, I'm more than more than happy to. Oh no, no there we go. Okay, and I want to say exactly. one of the cool things here is yeah. that you didn't specify what version of the Quen model you want. You didn't say, I want this to run the GPU or the CPU. Yep. You just said, I want the Quen model. Go figure it out. Like, yeah. What's going to work on this device, right? So, yeah. yeah. And and because I'm running on my laptop, it doesn't have an MPU in this one. I don't have a powerful GPU. So it's figured out to download the, the CPU um, version of it. And that's where, like, if we go back um, back up, the, the one that I deleted, was uh, so that was from um, when I practiced this demo beforehand. So it was the CPU version of that model um, that, that had previously been downloaded. But yeah, it's it's going. It probably won't hit before uh, the end of our two minutes. Uh, but thank you for joining us. Uh, there there is only so much juggling I can do to get us through to the end of this session. Uh, but I hope you've enjoyed build. I hope you enjoyed this session. Um, and do come over and see us at the site if you want to see proof in the pudding that it does actually work. <laughs>